Hi, everyone. Hi, Astrid. Look. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Zero yards of offense in the first quarter. Hi, Kathleen. <laughs> Happy to see Carol could already join after the General Assembly. So I think um Athena, how are how are we? Can we start or yes, please, thank you. Okay. Welcome everyone uh, to this invitation only uh, session on the open air strategy 2023-2025 of open air. I'm uh, very happy to see you all here. Now here at the beginning, I will start with some housekeeping rules. Natalia, yes, um, we, uh, we will only record the introduction and the presentation then we'll stop the recording and then we have a QA. and a uh, We will, because we can talk freely then, uh, of course, as of, uh, every time in an online environment, we ask you to mute microphones and to turn cameras off for the duration of the presentation. Afterwards, I would say in Q&A, please uh, put on your cameras so that we can see you. Could you please uh, add your name, uh, which I see, but maybe also your affiliation uh, so that uh, we can uh, see you, see who's there and uh, who's who, so that everyone can see that. And uh, feel free, uh, as I said, uh, during the Q&A to unmute and uh, to ask your questions and to turn on your camera. So that's housekeeping. Um, and we will record, as I said, only the beginning of this session. Next slide, please. I will be presenting together with uh, Eloy Rodriguez and uh, Natalia Manuela. Uh, Natalia Manuela is the CEO, CEO of Open Air, and Eloy Rodriguez is a member of the executive board and chair of the Open Science Strategy Standing Committee, who was in charge of developing the strategy that you see here today and that we will introduce to you and to reach out to you and see where we can work together. Um, we want to let you know what Open Air stands for because we have come a, a whole way during the last few years. As many of you know, we started off as a project, but since 2018, we are a legal entity and membership organization um, with members throughout Europe. And because we are a membership organization, we want to define better what the strategy was that we wanted uh, to the strategy that we want to hold up uh, within our mission and our vision for the next few years and how to uh, how to find a path to um, to work on these strategy priorities and that's why we reached out to you uh, because your organizations are uh, very vital in this ecosystem of scholarly communication to work together to bring scholarly communication to the next level and to work together to a future uh, approach of uh, bibliodiversity and of uh, disseminated uh, scholarly uh, results. Um, we, so we want to identify uh, opportunities to support the transition to an open scholarly communication system as is set on the, on the slides. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so, as said, we are now a membership organization. You see here uh, where in Europe you can find members of our organizations. We have 50 members now from 34 countries with a headquarter in Greece. Um, and our services are in operation since 2009 during uh, projects time. Uh, very important is that Open Air consists of an e-infrastructure and a network of people. So we have a network of national open access desks throughout Europe um, and uh, a lot of people supporting the infrastructure, supporting people within the countries to work with a scholarly communications infrastructure and to advance it. So it's a combination of human capital and ICT services. 
Now, open air is all about scholarly communications, as I said. It's a uh, an important part of the research ecosystem. Uh, every researcher publishes, every researcher disseminates results. Um, every uh, institution wants to broadcast their research findings. Societies do as well, funders do as well. Um, and open scholarly communication is of course key in achieving a bigger dissemination and a bigger impact of uh, what has been found and it will advance science uh, and knowledge. And so uh, the glue is uh, the infrastructure, the infrastructure to share and to reuse data and information, uh, the core to make open science happen. That is uh, what we say. And um, that's uh, what's at stake. It's a trans transition to an open ecosystem. And more and more, it's very important to stress the diversity, equity, and inclusion part of that ecosystem. It's not only a few in organizations or the happy few that should profit from uh, profit or uh, can use uh, what's out there. It's really a question of working together and to include everyone, not leaving anyone behind. And that's uh, why we want to work together. Now, when it's also what's also at stake is ownership. We have been talking about that uh, for years, who owns and controls the processes, uh, but also the costs. We know that open science is not free, but where do how do you pay it? Where uh, do you um, where do you get the money, and uh, how do you, we best invest? And cost efficiency and collaboration there is key. Okay, next slide. Um, it is our vision um, to transform society through validated scientific knowledge and allow researchers, educators, uh, funders, civil servants, and industry to find ways to make science useful for themselves, their working environments, and society. And our mission is to shift scholarly communication towards openness and transparency, openness and transparency, of course, mobilizing research and innovation actors to co-develop, co-develop, co-invest, and assume co-ownership of an open scholarly communication system. You see that in every part of uh, what we uh, want to do, what we want to achieve, it's all about collaboration, working together on stuff. And uh, working out uh, our vision and mission into a strategy is what we have done in the last few years. Uh, next slide, Natalia. Uh, we have worked out a three-year strategy, I uh, said, from uh, for 2023 to 25, to where we showcase the collective knowledge and commitments of our open air members. We have worked with our members to develop the strategy. Um, so it has gone through all parts of the organization. It outlines the organization's values, goals, and ambitions. Uh, and we identified actually five strategic priorities in open science that we want to work on in the next few years. And it concretely sets out action lines for its uh, implementation. Now, this is the context of, uh, of the strategy that we will present. And I'll give the floor to Eloy to tell us more about these five strategic priorities, uh, since he was the chair of the standing committee of open science um, policies and strategies who worked it out. Eloy, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Inga, and uh, welcome and thank you everybody to it's it's a great pleasure to have you all here uh, in this event. Uh, can you please move to the next slide, Natalia? So uh, as Inga already said, uh, um, during the, the last couple of years and through a series of uh, discussion and engagement with our uh, members, and considering uh, the, the the old landscape and and our vision and mission that uh, Inga already also outlined, uh, we have identified uh, five strategic uh, areas uh, or five strategic priorities for for open air where we think we should uh, put most of our uh, work and our efforts and for for each of of them we have identified uh, uh, the current uh, situation the current landscape the challenges and the opportunities and also what uh, how can uh, open air 
uh, contribute on what is the role for 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 open air on, on uh, each of these five uh, areas so i will uh, uh, go through uh, 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 one by one uh, to, from to which the uh, through which uh, one of them uh, very very quickly and then uh, natalia will uh, uh, talk how we put this uh, strategy and these uh, priorities into action. So can you move to the next slide, Natalia? So the, the first uh, strategic priority, uh, and this also kind of natural because uh, uh, open air, uh, uh, as already stated, uh, is born, was born uh, since the beginning uh, as a project uh, with a strong component on infrastructure, on infrastructure uh, uh, and also uh, uh, on the human network, but infrastructure was really key since the beginning. And since the beginning, uh, the question of interoperability is uh, what it was one of our focus and we think that uh, uh, we really uh, uh, need to continue to work on 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 that areas because interoperability is really key and is critical to ensure uh, 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 um, not only the technical uh, uh, um, uh, operation of uh, of the this this distributed uh, 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 um, infrastructure or, or ecosystem, but but exactly to to secure that we can have an, uh, uh, an ecosystem that that is uh, fully operational and and, uh, and 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 where also the, the 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 ownership and the control can be distributed, and so it's uh, much less uh, the the risk of flocking is much uh, is lower. And but to do that, uh, we really need to 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 have uh, an interoperable. Uh, uh, infrastructure. So, uh, apart from from uh, the, the the interoperability uh, itself, uh, the question of uh, how, how we can uh, uh, found and sustain and and make this open infrastructure sustainable uh, through founding through new business model models is also one area that we we will be uh, we want to to. To, to to work and and uh, and contribute uh, in in the next uh, uh, couple of years and 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 finally we really uh, uh, want to 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 uh, to design uh, uh, open uh, infrastructures uh, with uh, I think King already uh, stated this. Uh, with the stakeholders, so we want really to co-create, to de co-develop uh, the infrastructure, uh, uh, not only for the stakeholders, but with the stake, uh, but with the stakeholders, and for for doing that, it will it is very very uh, uh, important also that we are uh, uh, able to collectively modernize the current infrastructure infrastructures, because uh, we must admit that uh, we have uh, in in many uh, countries and in many places we still have uh, uh, old uh, uh, infrastructures that uh, that we need to to modernize to 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 meet the expectations from uh, from the researchers and all other stakeholders natalia can you move to the next slide please the second uh, the second uh, priority is uh, 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 data and service uh, quality. Uh, uh, we uh, we rely we we build our services on external uh, on external services like repository journals, Chris uh, Chris systems, uh, but uh, uh, for for uh, for infrastructures to be real really uh, 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 reliable, there is a minimal level of quality uh, uh, needed. And quality is often uh, not really uh, 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 is kind of hidden or, or, or in the background, and and uh, and uh, it, it results from from uh, compliance with uh, with uh, with standards. So uh, we uh, uh, will uh, work uh, on developing uh, 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 com uh, comprehensive data and service quality uh, assurance framework based on the fair principles. Uh, and uh, and and this will include uh, the, the the curation of a list of registries for for the most important uh, uh, entities on on, the, uh, uh, on research infrastructures uh, 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 ecosystem like uh, people organizations uh, services repositories uh, founding uh, uh, facilities and uh, we want to 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 uh, also to develop the, uh, a governance and the implementation model of this uh, quality uh, assurance uh, uh, framework 
uh, and and also uh, uh, not uh, also to 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 act as we preach so also to to uh, to hardwire the, the, the this quality service framework into our key open air uh, services on on uh, on both uh, this data and service equality, uh, as also in in the in the in the uh, the first one on the infrastructure, the question of the guidelines, the 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 the, the open air guidelines are really uh, critical uh, to 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 uh, to assure this. And also, we have other services on, on this uh, for this second one, like the the metadata validator and the broker services that can also help uh, uh, the components of uh, of the of the ecosystem to 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 improve uh, their, their their data and service quality can you move to the next one natalia please thank you the third uh, uh the third priority uh, that has been identified is really uh, uh, now also a very uh, hot priority uh, uh, in Europe, I think in the world in general, but uh, especially in Europe with the most, most recent development is uh, responsible research assessment. Uh, uh, and uh, when uh, we talk about responsible research assessment, uh, we uh, uh, open air uh, can really uh, uh, make uh, a contribution uh, to, to move uh, uh, this uh, uh, forward, uh, because uh, uh, we uh, uh, we can uh, contribute to 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 the development of uh, of uh, uh, a more diverse range of metrics and indicators. For instance, based on on the open uh, uh, research raft that is an open data set, uh, a very rich open data set that can uh, that already collects uh, information about uh, different uh, types of research results. Uh, 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 very much behind uh, 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 publications, and 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 uh, that can be really uh, uh, used for for the for the development of these uh, more diverse uh, metrics and uh, and more responsible also and transparent metrics and, and indicators. And the the question of of uh, of of transparency and openness also on, on research assessment is very important. And uh, uh, we want to 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 uh, collaborate and and to and to work with uh, with uh, others in Europe and beyond. So with of course with with uh, Coara uh, now that has been established. Uh, and but also with uh, with the UNESCO and uh, and the Global Research Council and other actors in other parts of the world to to really uh, move forward and sharing uh, best practices and experiences for responsible research assessment uh, in 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 the world and. Uh, uh, and again, as I already said, uh, uh, we think that uh, op open air and the open air uh, research graph can really uh, uh, provide a, a solid basis for for uh, curated, comprehensive, and and uh, 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 diverse metrics and 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 indicators. For the next one, Natalia, please. Uh, and the fourth, the fourth one is uh, uh, innovation and research communication and dissemination. We think that uh, uh, the, the current uh, uh, scholarly communication system is uh, uh, still uh, 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 very uh, poorly innovative. It's still very based on, on, the, on the workflows and on the procedures uh, that were used on the on the print era, not taking fully advantage of the of the web. And uh, but at the same time, we have uh, we are uh, uh, witnessing, especially on the last couple of years, and also uh, promoted by by uh, during the pandemic, to new approaches uh, and and new paradigm, paradigms of uh, of scholarly communication. Uh, uh, some shifts from from, for instance, from. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, reviewed and published to published and reviewed uprise of preprints uh, uh, and many other uh, many other innovative uh, approaches that are still uh, not uh, widely uh, uh, disseminated uh, uh, but uh, they have the, the potential really to 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 transform the current scholarly communication landscape and the opener that has been innovative in many ways and has promoted innovation uh, or, or especially on the on the repository landscape in in Europe and also has been innovative in in their uh, in our own services we really want to 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 participate and to contribute to to uh, to this movement uh, uh, leveraging uh, the the on on the 
on the current uh, 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 investment and resources from uh, research performing organizations that have infrastructures like repository, publishing platform, lib libraries, uh, and their own stuff, and uh, bringing all them uh, together. Uh, uh, and I think uh, all of uh, all, all these uh, um, uh, services and platforms and infrastructures can can be combined to really promote these uh, uh, novel uh, approaches, like uh, the ones that I really I already mentioned. And we seek to develop what we call kind of open science innovation. Uh, 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 to to where uh, that where we can support uh, uh, innovators and new ideas uh, re regarding scholarly communication. Next slide, please, Natalia. And, and finally, uh, the the fifth uh, priority is uh, uh, monitoring the uptake of uh, of open science. Uh, policies. Uh, uh, there are, of course, and this is a good thing, uh, a great diversity of uh, of uh, uh, policies in Europe and around the world. And But uh, uh, it's also, uh, uh, we will uh, also like to, to see uh, uh, some alignment and conversions for, for, for sustainable implementation of, uh, of those policies at uh, different, uh, di uh, different levels. So we uh, will work to align open science uh, 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 monitoring uh, 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 approaches, both at uh, institutional, national, uh, uh, European and global uh, levels, uh, uh, while uh, we, of course, uh, recognize the, 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 the need for 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 uh, regional and disciplinary and even institutional differences, uh, and uh, we uh, plan to we want to use the, the again the open air graph to support the generation of metrics and indicators not only for research assessment but also for for open science monitoring and uh, of course for instance as we have now currently our uh, 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 national uh, uh, pages on on the open on the open air website. Uh, uh, that are maintained by our, by our NOAAs, by our uh, uh, national open access desks. We want also, uh, it is uh, important to, to build uh, a narrative about uh, the policy and, the, and, uh, and its implementation and, and have a space where uh, that information is, is easily uh, uh, visible and, and, and shared. And with this, I, I uh, hand over to, to Natalia that will now talk about uh, how we put this uh, strategy into concrete actions. Natalia, please, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Eloy. So I will try to be quick because I think, you know, uh, for, for somebody outside, it's, it's a lot to take in. So uh, my, our role now as the executive part of, of Open Air is to see, uh, First of all, can you hear me well? Because there is an echo in the room, and you know, people have told me that um, they, you know there, there may, may be a problem. I will try to speak, you know, as clearly as possible. So, um, as you've seen, you know, we have five priorities that more or less cover the whole, you know, spectrum of open scholarly communications, which is huge. So, how do we turn strategy into actions? And you know, uh, we will give you the highlights, not all, because it's in the document. But um, uh, you know, please bear in mind that the reason why we asked for this uh, meeting and to invited you was to see how we can share some of these burdens to see, you know, if you know if we can uh, work out something together because this is key, you know of key importance to us. Natalia, you are muted. muted. Um, yes, yes, I, I pressed the wrong button. As Singa said, uh, what we have done is we have, you know, uh, we're building on 12 years of experience. And uh, again, I would like to stress the, 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 the two parts of, of the open air is the powerful network of open science experts that uh, they cover all of Europe. And when we say open science experts, it's, you know, uh, some people are, very, you know, they have good expertise in open access to publications, some others to, you know, to everything, you know, to even things that open air doesn't consider in its, its core like a, a citizen science. But still, these are the people embedded in, in institutions and in, in, in member states and associate countries, and these are the power. Then we have a very strong and growing ICT team at the, at the open air organization level. So we have 
people from CERN, CNR, uh, University of Warsaw and Athena Research Center, plus a few other satellites, that they are uh, ICT uh, people. So we have a really good, strong team. And then um, last is the global outreach and collaboration. What we find is that more and more people from around the world, from US, from, uh, from Australia, from Japan, from uh, Canada are knocking on our door. And we need to find a way, not just as open air, but as Europe's how to collaborate with them. Okay, so then uh, what we did is we have, you know, you know we, we're thinking from our uh, beginning, we say, uh, open air has two pillars, services, training, and policies. So what we try to do is to see how this, uh, this will align on, this, on these three pillars, how these, um, okay, I'm sorry. They will, um, uh, the, the, the actions will um, uh, revolve around the three pillars. So on the services, so on the services, our strong point is to have, you know, we have, um, I will explain a bit better, the open air infrastructure and services which are the core elements of the open science, open scholarly education ecosystem. But what we need to, to also focus, and I think everyone in Europe and around the world, is to see how we can become sustainable and how we can include, as Eloy said, innovation. This is you know, an innovation, not just in, in the technology, but innovation in, in, the, in, the, in the business and process models. And this is, this is what we are uh, lacking and what we need to focus. Then on the training, we have this powerful network. We have who have been embedding the training, you know, since day one. So the idea for us is the, the two focuses, the two focus is that first to develop and operate a hub of quality training. Because uh, I will say a bit more about the quality because this is you know our turning point for us now. And then uh, open science, when we started in open access in 2008 and 2009, I think we were the visionary, but now open science is in the, in the, in the, in the mouth of everyone. And how do we now, because it's broader than what we can um, uh, support, how can we work with others to, to, to have the supporting structures? And then on the policies, now what we see is that um, universities or we see organizations or funders are going you know towards open um, science policies but there are many flavors so so how can we do that you know how what can we do and what can we do together in order to to see to have to develop these communities of practice and how what are the tools that we supply we we give to them we provide to them so they can we can have a more aligned um, a more aligned um, environment ecosystem so on the services what you will see what you see on the right is you know open air has about 15 now to 16 services and we cover the whole uh, spectrum but uh, so you know, you may know Zenodo, you may know Argos, Amnesia, Open Orgs, all of these. But what, what we would like to focus on, on the strategy is on two core services, which are also in NEOS. Because the Open Air guidelines, it's about the interoperability, and the Open Air graph, which is you know we, we consider to be a core asset and a core asset of scholarly communication. Why? Because it's not just for discovery, but it will be used for research uh, assessment, for open science. How can we connect everything together? So think about the link open science. This is what open air graph is. So what, where do we need to focus? First of all is uh, open air, the open air services. We rely on infrastructure that is only um, provided by universities and uh, RIs and funders. So how can we modernize that? You know, um, we have been talking with core Kathleen is here about modernizing repositories. Now there is the diamond open access, which is setting models, but not sure how we are modernizing you know, the infrastructure. And then, and then um, or the, 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 the model. So one of the key things that we all need to work together, and it's a huge effort, is how to bring all of these institutionals and local um, uh, machinery, if you want, that we call it machinery or services, uh, up to speed to the to the new age. And this is this is you know this is the bed and this is what we need to see how we can do it. Uh, on the open air services, you know, the, the 12 services or the core services is that what we would like to have is we would like to 
to work on the interoperability. And as I said on, on, the, on, on the graph, we want to support EOS. We consider ourselves to be a key service provider in the, in the core of EOS. And then now with Coara, we want to see how we can support in a tangible way through the network and the services um, uh, this transition. Uh, and please remember that we started uh, our priority on research assessment. Uh, it was started a couple of years ago uh, before even the coalition existed. And why did we do that? Because our members thought that this is you now what we need to, to work on. And then when we talk about the, the services is that in open air, we have been, you know, I wouldn't say a close group, but you know, but we have been the same people in the ten, you know, in the, the ten, the same not people organizations or you know uh, similar organizations in the past ten years. Now we are moving to a more open governance in open air services. And for example, uh, we would like, you know, if the guidelines on the graph, we consider them global uh, assets, then we would like to see how we can open to the world, not just Europe. And uh, through EOSC is, I think, you know, one of the things that has started and that has helped us tremendously is the last bit is where we professionalize our service delivery. So we have been in an effort through um, two projects, the Open Air Nexus and the EOSC Future is, 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 and it's a huge effort, I have to say, is how can we, you know, the services that we have already been delivering, how can we be more professional? Because this is the only way that we can have, you know, the, the, the community owned, you know, uh, services to be used is only when it will be professionalized. And then uh, I, I've left uh, the business models at the last because I know this is also you know, something that everyone around the world is looking at. And we're really looking into EOS and EOS Association to see uh, what they will do on that. Because this is Europe we're talking about. This is a diverse and distributed environment. And, um, you know, uh, one country may pay, the other country may not pay. And, you know, this is something I think that we need to tackle together. It's a problem for all and we need to tackle it together. Uh, I will not go over this. It's just that, you know, uh, if you see in our, um, in our uh, strategy is that we try to map, you know, we have five, um, five services here as an example. But of all of our services, we have this um, matrix where we try to see in each of our, these priorities, what is the service you know, that is you know, addressing this priority. And then internally in the, in the, in the, in the office, what we will do is to see how you know, we, can, uh, we can improve. Then training and support. What are the focus areas? The focus area is, first of all, is, uh, you know, I, I would say on three. Three are the, the, the key targets. Is we need to have a learning management system that holds uh, world class training uh, or learning resources for open science. And why do we you know why do we do that? Uh, we use our community, and Eloy here was the, the, the leader of Foster Open Science. Foster Open Science has, has really uh, proved to us that we need platforms and that we need platforms that uh, have an open governance. And this is what uh, the openplato.eu uh, Moodle platform has. It's owned by OpenAir, but we, we will be seeking an open governance and open editorial boards. And we want it to be, you know, if possible, the best uh, training for open science out there. And having said that, is that I think, you know, the open science community has really uh, spent a lot of effort on producing, you know, um, material, learning material, uh, and we're producing a lot. Now, I think what it is time is to just step back and consolidate and focus on the quality, you know, have fewer material, but of better quality, focus now where you know where it matters so it matters now at the university level it matters at the research infrastructures it matters also at the policy makers and the founders and then i've left it at, at, at the end is the exp, uh, certification so certification for learning material not certification for people because not sure if open air is the body to do that. You know, we have EUA, we have other bodies to do that, but we can certainly uh, work with them. Uh, it's certification for the learning material. So, you know, how do we do that? Quality, 
uh, learning platform certification, they all go together. So our focus would be on the next two, three years is to somehow uh, consolidate on this. Then on the, on the policies, on the policies, uh, what, what we are trying to do is, you know, we have built this uh, open air uh, network of nodes. It has worked. Uh, they are excellent people, they are expertise, and now they are expanding, you know, many are expanding their offices, so they are consolidating at the university offices where, you know, they, they, they assume more role within the university or the national um, or thematic levels of their country. So now, now the time has come is to have to see how this network of nodes that we have built is how do they interact with others? Because open science, you know, is, is a superset of open scholarly communication. So this is this is something that we need to work on. And also, you know, we need to upskill to the full spectrum of open science. So, you know, how should these people, you know, know of what's coming next, of what's coming on, you know, uh, we, we had it with open data, we had it with fair data, and now it's software. So how do we keep on doing that? Then the policy specific goals, I think, you know, what we can do is we can be a learning environment so people learn from each other. And then we have this practice, uh, practical tools. So we have these policy models for institutions, legal and ethical frameworks that we're working on. And this is where there is a, a lot of room for collaboration with, you know, with organizations like, uh, like, uh, like the ones in, in this meeting. Then how do we support this strategy? I will not go over this, uh, you know, just give you some examples. So first of all is, you know, it's imperative, I would say, imperative, because, you know, it, it, it didn't used to be like that when we had open access to publication, but now with open score communication that is, you know, overlaps a lot with open science is partnerships and collaboration is a must. So I mean, there is no other way forward. Then what we will do is we participate in project standards and collaborative initiatives. I will give you some examples, but um, uh, our goal is not to participate in anything that does not um, address any of the aspects of these uh, five strategic priorities that we have defined. And then uh, uh, the, the third one, so, you know, last but not least, is promote an effective organizational structure. So we started with start, uh, standing committees. Now we are a four-year mature organization. So we are reshuffling some of our uh, internal work. Uh, the, the most um, important thing is that we are shifting to a more inclusive membership model. So, you know, we, we will open doors for more, um, for more institutions to participate. And then we will extend the governance uh, to inc include working groups uh, to, uh, so that the community can participate in what we do. And our working groups are, you know, very specific to, you know, pinpointing things that, you know, uh, are for delivery. Um, just to give you an idea of, you know, how we participate in projects. So uh, I said that open air graph is one of our core uh, targets. So in these four um, projects, all of them are European projects, uh, in Fair Corporeos, in Graspoes, in Pathos, and in Side Lake, the graph has a very you know, prominent role. Is in, 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 in the first two ones is how do we extend the graph in order to do metrics, in order to provide uh, advanced discovery. In Pathos, we use the graph in order to, uh, to, to read it and, you know, uh, and assess the economic and social impact of open science. So we are putting a lot of AI there. And also in Sign Lake, what we are trying to do, it's, it's a project that is going to start in, in January, is that um, it's, it's going to be our vehicle to uh, an open governance uh, for the graph. And it's not just open governance, but to allow more technical uh, teams around Europe and around the world to participate in this uh, great endeavor. So this is this is a uh, you know just to give you an idea. Then open air is not you know is based on Europe. We have a European footprint, but then we do collaborations beyond Europe. So uh, some examples is the Canada Explore portal, which we are. Uh, we um, work with the uh, Canadian Association of Research uh, Libraries and uh, three Canadian federal grant uh, funders, and we have a portal for them. So they are, you know, they, they're using it. You know, uh, they're still evaluating. 
but uh, you know, this is something that others around the world, they see, okay, you know, you have the grub so you can build a portal on top. This is excellent. How can I bootstrap my process? Because again, in open air, we can support uh, entities around the world to bootstrap this process. We cannot really, you know, we're not here to sell the services, you know, but we're here to support and help. Then we participate in a Mellon Foundation project where, you know, we are thinking about these metrics, usage, these clicks and downloads on books. How can we share among publishers in, in a trusted way? Because, you know, this is something um, somebody said about, you know, uh, about open science and the research assessment, but uh, the cost of publishing, uh, they much rely on this usage data on publication. So no one is sharing from the publishers. And this is something that we need to see, uh, for example, what are the architectures and what are the technicalities to see how they can feel more comfortable in sharing. And then, you know, the, the one that I really like, you know, we haven't, uh, uh, we participated in the proposal with 11 US major universities uh, to set up a science and technology observatory that embeds diversity, equity, inclusion. So it's not about open science, but using the graph to do something, you know, uh, close to open science. And this is this is what uh, this is what um, uh, we're doing. So uh, Inge, this is the last slide. So I think I will stop here, and then you know you can take it from here. Yes, thank you, Natalia. I think uh, we had a great overview of our strategy. We will now stop recording. Athena? <laughs>